also working in uh, BLC security and this uh, uh, talk would um, go over API security testing and their importance in the CI pipelines. Um, who am I? I'm Guy Levinger. Um, um, I was already introduced. Um, I was a tech lead in the IDF, CTO at BLST. I'm a Rust developer and enthusiast, if anyone wants to talk about it later. Um, and uh, alongside me is Raz Magori. Raz, would you like to introduce yourself? I think his mic yeah. is broken. Ah, yeah. Okay, it's not broken. Oh, can you hear me now okay? Yeah, Raz. Okay, so I'll take I, I'll take over. I think he had some delay and mic issues. Um, Raz Mogori, he was uh, cyber. He worked in cyber forensics in the IDF. Uh, he was a penetration tester for um, four years, I think, and then he joined uh, Blast. Uh, uh, and then he joined Blast to um, lead the Cherry Bomb uh, team uh, in our company. Uh, he is a Rust developer and enthusiast as well. Um, open API. Let's talk a bit about Open API so we'll get to know the players around the field of API testing. Uh, the Open API initiative um, uh, is um, a very important initiative that created the Open API specification. Um, the, um, specific, the specification previously known as Swagger specification, um, a standard way to document REST APIs, um, open source, yay. And the most important things is um, it could be auto-generated from your source code. You can take source code or IAC or API gateway, stuff like that, and generate Open API specs from them. Or you could do the opposite. You could write the open API specs by hand and then generate your API gateways or code from them, um, which would help to um, automate the process of the API gateways and router making um, um, and make it much faster, much more um, robust, uh, I, I'd say. Um, and if you have a well-defined open API spec, um, according to the open API initiatives definition, if you have a well-defined one, um, it gives you a certain level of security uh, from the get-go. Um, so you won't have to worry about a lot of uh, uh, stuff. Uh, let's see a case study uh, about um, open API specs, um, security in the CI CD, um, in the CI CD pipeline, API security, and stuff like that. Um, let's meet, uh, wait, wait one second, I need to move something. Okay, let's meet, oh, come on. Okay, let's meet unsafe. Unsafe, the uh, fake company um, that uses a REST API um, to uh, serve clients with their websites, let's call it e-commerce for now, and they're creating a new feature. That's the case study we'll um, go and, and explore. Um, they create a profile page for user. They write down the requirements, their product managers write down the requirements. I mean, we have to have uh, um, a, na a first name, last name, email. Uh, we have to have um, stuff. Uh, uh, we have to have uh, uh, an admin endpoint, which uh, from which you can get the uh, entire user uh, um, registry for admin stuff like that. The requirements are there. Uh, the design, um, usually done by architects, um, writing down the specs, designs, um, telling. Um, uh, telling the developers what to do, and we go into development. Um, 
the devs uh, write the actual code um, that uh, implements the API's functionality in the backend and integration, part of the DevOps, uh, uh, part of the testers and DevOps crew uh, uh, responsibility. Um, the API go through massive testing and integrate into the uh, already existing environment. And, you know, unsafe was not safe. Um, shocking, I know, foreshadowing. Um, a month after going to production, unsafe suffered the massive data leak, exposing all the users' private information. Now, um, it happened from the admin endpoint I mentioned before, but we'll explore it um, uh, later in the, uh, in the next slides. Well, let's look, um, whose responsibility was it? Uh, was it the programmer's responsibility? Uh, if the problem was in the implementation itself, in the uh, implementation of the functions themselves, that might be the programmer's responsibility, um, at least at first. Um, handling of error, stuff like that um, might, uh, um, might actually, um, uh, that might actually be, um, I I'm sorry, um, missing something uh, I'm, I'm forgetting something okay yeah um handling of errors uh is the developer's responsibility as well and um should be done uh, by them but as you'll see in the next slide uh the tester's responsibility is to test that the developers actually did what they should do correctly so it's kind of a um a split between them um, though um, in testers' cases, the endpoint, um, uh, the excuse the developers could make is that the testers did not test it uh, um, uh, well enough. And the testers, uh, well, the excuse that they would use is the fact that the uh, endpoint itself in which the uh, user data got leaked from uh, was a very obscure endpoint, uh, which they could not get to in tests, uh, or a new endpoint which they did not add, add, tests, add enough tests for. Um, and the surprising uh, new actor here is the DevOps responsibility. Since uh, Unsafe used uh, uh, the open API spec to generate their uh, gateways uh, as uh, infrastructure, they use the open API spec as infrastructure as code, to generate their API gateways and, and, uh, and the router code. So it's the DevOps responsibility to make sure that that infrastructure actually uh, went up correctly. So um, anyway, it doesn't really matter. The damage was already done, user data was leaked, people suffered and, uh, and will continue to suffer as we know with the data leaks uh, online. And um, Someone is to blame, but we should learn from it rather than blame people. Um, what else I should have done? Um, this is the main theme of this talk. Uh, catching, the, uh, catching the issues earlier. What you should do? Uh, you should audit the API using OWASP files. If you don't have OWASP files, generate them now, uh, yesterday, if you can. Validate the API itself by te testing uh, by testing it and comparing it to the OS file, open API spec file. Yeah, um, you uh, run general security tests on the APIs to check stuff like open redirect, um, insecure downgrade, stuff like that. Simple stuff that you might have missed, but uh, if uh, if you check in uh, if you would find them in integration and dev environments will cost a lot less to fix. And you should do all this in the CI, uh, in the CI CD pipeline way before production, as early as possible. Um, one second. Um, so now we'll go over to talk about Cherry Bomb. I think, Raz, did you uh, fix your mic? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Not. So uh, oh, you can hear Raz me? will go okay. over Cherry Bomb. Okay, so Cherry Bomb is basically uh, exactly what Guy talked about that enables you to do those tests in the CI level. It enables you to test your API and I think how you can uh, move a slide. Yeah, Unsafe could have used Cherry Bomb to test during the CI stage to find those errors. Yeah, Cherry Bomb enables you to 
audit your OS file, and then validate the OS file with your API. So we'll take a look right now and see if we run Cherry Bomb on what we mocked up as unsafe uh, API OS file. We see that we get two tables with the first table being what we call the passive table. This is the audit of the OS file. One second, yeah, here it is. This is the audit of the OS file and the second table being the basically verifying the API itself with the OS, seeing that it matches, that everything responds the way it's supposed to and every authentication is verified. And let's take a look at some of the results found in the table more closely. I wish you could move a slide. I'm gonna try, but as you know, YouTube may not let me. Oh, so let's look at some of the sort of did. some of the results from the passive test. We can see that some of the string attributes this tells us about get last get last ticket. One, 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 one moment. One moment. I'm sorry, the slideshow got kind of wrecked. Sorry. You can go ahead to the next one. Yeah, so here we can see that some of the string attributes did not have a maximum length. So as we all know this could cause errors and in some cases a denial of service. It is a low warning, but we should know that the API might not check for it. This is only the OS file that we're auditing. Same thing with an array attribute that didn't have a maximum amount of items that the array could, could have. And also you get some uh, information warnings, which will not uh, fail your CI pipeline. But if a person is going to read your OS file, most uh, all of the endpoints should have a description on their use case and what, what are they used for basically, yes. All right, if we can move forward, we'll look at some of the active results. We basically got two active results. And an active result is a result that includes sending requests to the API. We can see the Cherry Bomb found an open redirect in the slash back home endpoint and an authentication bypass, which is probably what caused unsafe data leak. If we look at the code itself, because we know the code is in get users, Cherry Bomb tells us that this is all happening in the CI pipeline. Once it fails, we can go over the results and see that the get users endpoint is broken. When we go over the code for the get users, we see that somebody disabled authentication. This was probably an endpoint without a UI button. So the testers could have missed this. Uh, it is a simple result, but it just demonstrates the power of testing in the CI pipeline and finding these sort of stuff. The uh, authentication was disabled, probably for testing, and that's that's what happened and leaked the the user's data. Yeah, if you can move. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead? Okay. Uh, basically, um, if you have uh, OWASP files, find them, and if you don't, uh, generate them. Um, can create the. Uh, um, uh, Audit your, open, audit your open API specs, validate them, run security tests uh, on your APIs in the CI pipeline, uh, increase your security in your CI uh, pipeline itself. Make your CI pipeline with uh, security first thoughts. I mean, um, we, we already know uh, the saying of develop, uh, um, the, um, security first development, but Security first CI uh, pipeline creation should be uh, there as well. Um, do all those things, audit, validation, simple security tests, stuff like that, do them all as early as possible in the CI stage. And um, you should pick stuff to integrate friction uh, uh, frictionlessly uh, into your CI stage, which I, um, which is, Again, Cherry Bomb uh, is a bit of advertising. Cherry Bomb uh, is open source and is uh, frictionless to integrate into your CI pipelines, and it solves those exact problems um, for developers, DevOps, and um, organizations alike. Um, you should uh, 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 use uh, Cherry Bomb or a Cherry Bomb 
similar uh, or, or a solution that is similar to Cherry Bomb to uh, solve this problem in your uh, organizations. And we're uh, looking for uh, contributors. Um, questions? Can this integrate within uh, with Docker? Uh, interesting that you've asked. Uh, we've actually removed the slide that was too advertising that shows exactly how you integrate it with the uh, Docker. Um, we have a video which, uh, if you'd like, I, I send a link to uh, in the description in the uh, group. Um, it shows you how to uh, integrate it with Docker and take, um, and we have a whiz that takes the Docker and creates an integration for Jenkins or GitHub AI actions and stuff like that. Um, we take it even one step further, but yeah. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, we can use uh, we can use it with Docker, and uh, we have a hosted Docker image on uh, um, AWS ECR, uh, free public. Yeah, no, perfect. Thank you. Um, I'll I'll send the link uh, right now. Um, one moment, I'll, I'll just find it. Um, any any other question is in the meanwhile in in the meantime. That's the one I'm sending it in the chat. Um, it shows you how to uh, integrate it into your, uh, how to use our uh, CI CD uh, generate uh, uh, with to generate your own integration, but um, yeah, it could be used in Docker. Um, any other uh, questions? Um, Regarding API security testing, uh, what uh, what it's about, um, how early you should do it in the CI say stuff like that. Any any other questions? So I actually do have another one. Um, I'm with with this. Um, you know, is there any kind of limitation on like using it for like just an you know a one off pen test? You know, there's a couple of guys we work with. You know that we have here that do one off tests from time to time and. Uh, uh, is there like limitations on, you know, the free versions that you guys use or, you know, is, is, is there, is, is that going to cause you guys any kind of like uh, usability issues if, you know, we're, we're, we're using it to hammer, uh, you know, several, several APIs. And when I say several, we're talking, you know, 40, 50 different APIs from a couple, from a company with a couple different subsidiaries. Okay. Um, I get your question. Um... We have two ways of using Sherry Bomb. One is the hosted version where we host it on our servers and it just runs faster and hosted on our servers, I don't know. And there is mm -hmm. the other one where you run the uh, uh, Docker container or the uh, bin itself on your on your servers and computers, uh, which we allow both, uh, both of those. We are uh, Apache 2, you can use it to do whatever you want, just, uh, uh, you know, um, give us, um, we do ask that you give us feedback and stuff like that if you're using it uh, regularly, um, not for anything commercial, just to know um, what next, what test we need to implement next and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you can use it on your computer or you can use it hosted. The hosted version will cost money. Uh, it costs like, I think $20 a month for practically unlimited usage. Um, but there are, but there is a freemium version uh, with uh, a small number of scans, um, and the uh, open source itself, like uh, you can clone it, you can download, you can download download it from Crate.io, you can download the Docker image, uh, um, even the API key. You need to run, uh, you need to use with the uh, Docker container. It's free. Um, Everything run on your computers is free and no limitations. Um, and it runs extremely fast. Um, uh, it's, um, Raz, what is the uh, um, uh, average of requests per minute? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that number right now. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, it, it runs uh, through API really fast. Yeah, no worries, all good. Um, any other um, questions, requirements, um, talking points? Again, we are um, taking contributors from every, from uh, um, 
everywhere because uh, we need to get it to um, to a place where um, everyone could and should use it. I mean, it's getting there, but uh, we still need uh, some more active tests and pass and passive audits. So uh, if there are any, if there aren't any other questions, um, as I said, uh, we were Guy and Raz. Uh, there is also Nathan on our team. I think he's uh, um, uh, with us now. Um, there is also Nathan in our team. Um, we've been Raz and Guy. Uh, reach us out. Uh, uh, reach out to us. Um, uh, through uh, GitHub uh, issues, uh, um, through our company emails. I'll drop the link in uh, uh, to Cherry Bomb uh, as we speak. I mean, I'll, I should have dropped it uh, a bit before. Uh, if, uh, if I'm... Okay, so I've uh, sent the link to Cherry Bomb. Um, thank you for listening to us. And um, it was... Uh, which method communication would you prefer? Ah, any, anyone, open an issue, open a pull request, um, send us an email. Um, I think Nathan, uh, I think, um, uh, I think we have a, a contact uh, a page in our, uh, not, not page, a contact section in our, uh, in our GitHub readme. Um, Every method is uh, is fine. I mean, our emails are out there, so you can just um, ping me or Raz or uh, Nathan. Um, we we uh, we read every uh, communication method. So uh, um, yeah, uh, thank you everyone for uh, listening to our uh, uh, talk about API security testing in the CI environments.